Welcome to the Shifting with Marley podcast. I'm Marley. Thank you for joining me wherever you are. All that I ask of you, the listener, is to have an open mind and an open heart. And in return, I offer you myself. In today's episode, we are going to talk about creating the new earth through a new creativity paradigm. Creation is our birthright. We were born to be creators, and we each chose to incarnate on earth now together to transcend the old and create the new earth. I'm very excited to welcome Allison Holly, who wrote an entire book on this subject. Allison is an intuitive guide and a channel and the author of the book, The Era of the True Creator. Allison's life mission is to activate others into their highest expression of self, to be radiant, ecstatic creators. Welcome, Allison. Hey, Marley. Thank you so much. I'm trying not to blow out my microphone here. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks so much for being here. I get really excited and my, my voice is not consistent. Sometimes I am very loud. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Um, Before we dive in, Allison, can you please let people know how to connect with you and where to find you? Yeah, absolutely. I am mostly on Instagram. You can find me at Allison Holly creator. And I also have a website. It's allisonholly.com. You can find all of the good stuff on there. Um, Also, the book that you talked about is available on my website as well as Amazon. So awesome. And you also have your own podcast called the True Creator Podcast, which I recommend people check out as well, available on all the podcast platforms. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's kind of my, um, my fun area where I can share all the in-between lines, you know, the in-between the lines of the book, like sharing more background. So stuff that I just kind of channel on a day-to-day basis. I'm like, oh, that was good. I got to share that, you know? (laughs) So it's a great avenue for that. Yeah. So Allison, let's talk about your book, which I read a lot of in preparation for this podcast episode today. And I really, really enjoyed uh, the era of the true creator. Before we talk about what it means to be a true creator, let's talk about where we've been, what you call the dramatic paradigms or dramatic creation. Can you tell us a little bit about these dramatic paradigms? Yes. I love that question. It's funny, you know, It's not that I've been doing this for a long time because eight years isn't really a long time, but it's been a minute since I've really talked about that specifically. And I love that you brought that up because sometimes it's like, oh, on to the next concept. And I really loved when I was delivered this particular concept through channeling. It was so, it was such a light bulb moment for me. So this book, The Heir of the True Creator is It's a book of sort of compiled channeled insights over the course of about three years. And then I plugged it all into this outline that my guides gave me all at once. And it formed like this beautiful story, which was just so magical, right? And um, so dramatic paradigms, essentially, we all understand and we've been introduced to this idea of the monkey mind, right? And sometimes we feel it, it drives us crazy. It's when our mind is on autopilot and we're just kind of mental chatter and we're doing the same things that we always do. We're on autopilot. And that's sort of what my guides introduced to me as dramatic paradigms, because what I was introduced to was this idea that drama isn't necessarily, you know, like uh, reality TV shows or whatever, (laughs) the way that we think of drama but it's actually just the recreation of our old patterns and not being present because when we're present, we're engaged in this quantum reality, which is so beyond the mind. And, you know, I don't know, have you seen the movie Limitless? Oh yeah. I love that movie. It's such a good movie. And I feel like it's a good example of this particular concept because when we step into that quantum reality, within our consciousness in deep presence. That's what it feels like. And you just open up to so many new possibilities and those new possibilities and those new potentialities are 
you know, what I call true creation. Uh, so we've got dramatic creation, which is really, you know, going about life in the way that our mind has already been programmed and we've already created these things. We're just doing them again and again, because a big part of this, this concept of dramatic creation is that our minds are really built to sort of house the reality that we've projected already, right? So our mind actually wants to keep us within this reality of what we already know. And the mind creates sort of these boxes, like I already know this, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with what we've already done before. And we can see how that gets us into trouble because when we're always doing what we already know, sometimes we have a lot of these programs that they're just really not working for us but we say that they are because it's kind of what we've always done. And, you know, we're in such a new, a new reality and the collective is awakening and we're individually awakening. And it's so, we need to be able to be highly present to see what's happening and to create, and it's happening so quickly. And one of the beautiful things about being really present is you sort of move outside of the realms of time And when you're outside of those realms of time, you can function very quickly or create things that you would think, I don't know how I'm going to do that. It becomes very, very peaceful, very simplified. All these very large concepts, they just start to make sense because you have that high level of presence. So in a, in a sense, we become a little bit like superhuman in that we get to, you know, the mind has all these limitations, but we get we get the chance to be really, really present. And in that deep level of presence, we see things so much more clearly and they're easier. And the flow happens, those flow states that people are talking about right now, like we get to step into those and feel it all the time. That was a lot, but I got really excited (laughs) just to share. Yeah. And I like in your book related to dramatic paradigms, how you frame it as creating a lot from the mind and the ego. And I've talked about the ego a lot on this podcast and it's creating for maybe entertainment purposes, creating things out of habit and often creating things from the basis of judgment, fear, anxiety, anger, and pain, which is a lot of egoic concepts. And also from this place of separation and duality, which the ego loves. And there's a huge control aspect as well in the dramatic paradigms. And I'm assuming that in the dramatic paradigms, in this old paradigm, people were very money driven. So like creating things Mm -hmm. for a profit, not for the highest good of all. Yeah. It's so interesting that you bring that in particular up because I was laying on my couch meditating (laughs) before this podcast, as I shared with you, you know, when we're recording this, it's just been daylight savings time. So my internal clock is like, what is going on? Right. And so I was just trying to gain my bearings and laying on my couch meditating. And I verbally said, can I just, you know, can you just help me out here? Cause here's what's going on. And I heard, go read your book. (laughs) And so (laughs) you want to know what page they had me open up to. What? It was uh, first, it was two different pages. The first one was all about creating not for money. And, and I was like, that's an interesting thing for me to be delivered. I kind of felt like my book served a little like, hello, remember that you don't need to be this busy that you are acting out of fear right now, because I was, so I'm just tattling on myself a little bit, (laughs) but, (laughs) and then the next part, the next part that I was uh, guided to open up to was this chapter oneness through harmonization and the real purpose behind why we create. And I just, I just think it's really fascinating that you just brought that up in particular, because we do have this whole concept of survival. And when we go back to the ego, you know, the ego is this beautiful aspect of us. And from my perception, the ego is this beautiful part of us. It's the mind that tries to focus in and narrow and make us believe the human reality, right? Which is something that from my perception 
it's exactly what we wanted. You know, we incarnated as humans, we're here on this earth. And then we're like, I've got to believe this. Otherwise, this is no different than everything else we've experienced in our higher form, in our expanded form. It's, it's almost this beautiful part of the game that we get to have these feelings of being separate from each other and these feelings of fear that we need to do something in order to survive, that we need to, you know, check these boxes off or do certain things or, or even have sort of a hierarchy amongst us. And those games of separation, you know, it, it's, uh, that's one of the chapters in the book is the game of separation, because it's a game that we've been playing and we just haven't been conscious of it. We haven't been conscious of the fact that it's actually a game. It's something that we're playing with this, this game of forgetting this game of pretending that we're separate when really we're so interconnected and part of the all that is, and just these these beautiful fractal aspects of, of the all that is. And when it comes to, you know, the fear and the separation, we can move beyond those by just tuning into our own eternal nature, right? So a lot of times these concepts were like, well, you know, that's, that's really big. And I don't know how to get out of that. And I firmly believe that I need to do this and I need to survive because I know there are going to be people that hear this idea and they'll think, well, I do need to eat. You know, those are very true. It's very true. We've got these realms of reality and we've got the physical realm of reality that has its own laws, its own frequencies. And within that truth of the physical reality, I have a physical body and you have a physical body. They are not one in the same. However, our consciousness and our energy, when we get into those realms of reality, that's where we start to really find this interconnectedness, but we don't lose this aspect of ourselves. And so it's really a process of becoming multidimensional. It's not about I've got to let go of all my human self and just like mm, only love and light, you know? <laughs> and when we try to do that, even with the best of intentions, it causes what a lot of people, you know, refer to as spiritual bypassing and things like that, because we're ignoring this beautiful aspect of ourselves called our ego and being human and feeling fear, even that's beautiful. We get to experience that. We get to experience what is it like to forget that I'm God, right? What is that like to forget that I am this massive creator energy and to just be walking along, you know, like it's just a meat suit. I mean, that's kind of a funny game that we're playing. So I love that perspective, Allison. <laughs> you have such a unique perspective and I'm just so happy to have you here to share it. So that's where we've been the dramatic creation, the dramatic paradigm, very ego-driven, the separation. That's where we've been. Now let's talk about where we're going. This new era of creativity you talk a lot about in your book, embodying what it means to be a true creator. Can you give us a quick summary? You've touched on it already, but a quick summary of what it means to be a true creator. Oh, what I want to do is just like convey it somehow outside of words. So let me just, I do this a lot. And this is a big part of what I feel is important, that it's okay to, to pause and to listen. This is a big part of just how I live. And it feels really good. So if, if everyone wants to pause and listen with me, and that right there is it that's being a true creator, that pause, that feeling that you felt. Did you feel how good that felt to just let it all go, to just be for a full second or two? That is being a true creator. You know, it's funny. I'm actually writing my second book right now, so I'm, I'm jumping around a little bit, but this will lead back to what you said. And my second book is all about play. As soon as I hit publish on this first book, my guides were like, start studying play. It's what your next book is about. And I was like, that is so funny. Like who, who studies play? This is a great life, right? 
So when, as I started studying this and really living this in my life, I realized that, you know, we are always playing. We're always playing. We're just not always conscious of it. And the reality that we're living in right now is we're playing with creation. We're playing with it in this way that says creation means waking up with my alarm and going to work and, you know, paying the bills and building, building, building and striving and hustling and all of these things. That's still play, but it's play from an unconscious sort of more unbalanced and more dense level of reality. So all we're doing is we're elevating that play. We're elevating that play to a higher level of consciousness where we're just so present with all that we do. And then ecstasy starts running through the body, right? And hopefully we all felt it just in that brief moment of pause. You know, the I am, I am. And even beyond saying I am, it's just kind of silence just existence and not even needing to say I am because it's just the truth that comes to us in those moments where we're just highly present and that's being a true creator. So in the era of the true creator, in that book, what I talk about is being present and not recreating those old mental loops and what comes first. And this comes by itself it, what comes first is shadow work. And so shadow work just naturally emerges. It happens all on its own. So often I see people and they're just like digging into that shadow work, right? We take that old paradigm of like hustle and work and all of that. And then we have these spiritual awakenings and we're like, well, now I got to hit it hard with the shadow work. And, and it's a beautiful intention, but shadow work comes up. It's sort of this natural thing that happens as we expand and evolve and bring our frequency to a higher vibration. As we do that, everything that's not going to vibrate at that level is just going to, it's going to be so obvious and painful. <laughs> and I think you talked about, you know, you said you talked about trauma in your last podcast and, you know, being able to have the tools to work through these things, powerful, it's very powerful stuff, but it's not our lifelong thing, right? We actually finish these processes and then we start playing. And that's really the important part. And that's being a true creator is we're just like, okay, here's the shadow work. It's showing itself. I'm going to be with myself. I'm going to love everything that's coming up. Cause that's really what shadow work is. It's just love, self-love for all aspects of our true self, our entire self, all of the things that we've ever created. And then, oh, there's this release. And then we just get playful with it. So there's a whole bunch. <laughs> yeah. And, and if I wrote a little summary from, from me reading your book about what it means to embody being a true creator. And what I came up with from your words is creating from a place of joy and inner freedom, which is what you just touched on and creating from our heart instead of our mind and creating from a broader, higher level perspective, which is very different from the dramatic paradigm and also creating for the good of all. Mm. I love that. It's a great summary. And it so connects with, you know, something that we were talking about before that you're an environmental scientist and that, you know, this is really broad perspective. All of these systems work together. And when you mentioned for the good of all, I'd love to dive into that a little bit. You know, there, there's just a little bit of, of work that we can do around that or a little bit of play that we can do around that discovery, because as we are working for the good of all, what we really come into is this understanding that it's an interconnected system. So in the end, it's always really just about us. It's always about personal, like greater self-love and greater, you know, self-acceptance. And it's always about the self. You know, I remember when I was channeling, this was really beautiful. I hold these channeling circles 
And I used to do these channeling circles with a small group of friends and they were really powerful because just these questions that they would ask and the energy among us was, it would ignite me. And I was like, whoa, and bringing through some just beautiful stuff. (laughs) And I remember it started coming through all of this, like information about how we actually care less in a way as we expand our frequency and the questions that came up was, well, how do you, you know, what's the difference between being this evolved, like highly conscious being and being a psychopath, right? And these are the questions. And I think this is why we limit ourselves because we think I need to be mired in this, you know, I need to be like sad about this. I need to be upset. I need to be, you know, full of, full of these denser, intense emotions, which it's fine, but that's not actually what I've been shown through channeling. We actually get this effervescent joy, even when we're going through some of these, um, emotional states and, you know, that question of, I mean, then you just don't care about anybody, you know, what's up with that. And the reality, what happens is that we awaken and our heart expands, like you said. And, and from there, it's not that we care about the drama stuff. We, you know, we don't necessarily see things as destructive anymore. We see it all as a beautiful purpose, a beautiful collage of the all that is. And that, you know, we sort of go out of those really polarized states. But what does happen is we recognize that by doing what feels really good, we're naturally doing the best for the all that is the best for everyone in humanity. I have zero desire to go out and like punch somebody in the face, right? Most days, most days. (laughs) (laughs) But when I'm in that oneness consciousness, all I want to do is share joy and love and freedom and all of these beautiful things that I've learned. It's a natural cause and effect. I touch on this when it comes to dramatic paradigms. We are afraid of letting go of some of those because we think that we won't be purpose driven. We think that we won't care about anything. We think, well, then I'll just sit on my couch all day. That was a fear that came up for me. If I don't have all of these, these worries, then am I just going to be sitting still and not doing anything with my life? And it's the opposite. I can't even tell you how much I want to do, but it's coming from a really, really beautiful place that's just exuberant for the creation, just so excited, right? And not, and not like um, trying to fix things, if that makes sense. Yes. And from this place, Allison, when we access our power as true creators and create from our heart space to create from, from that from that joy and that freedom that you just talked about when it comes to the new earth, which is kind of where we're headed in the future and this transition period we're in now to get there. And as we wake up to being true creators, what are we creating? That's such a good question. It's such a big question. The answer is really anything we want. (laughs) I love that. I want to say about four years ago, I channeled at the time I was married. We're still really good friends. I channeled sometimes in my channeling, I just start laughing uh, because the energy is so good. And it just feels, it fills me with this, like, oh, it's just so good. And sometimes it's funny, you know, even these things that we look at and we're so worried about when I get into that channeled space, sometimes it's just laughter. It's so silly. And I remember a few years ago channeling, uh, you know, at the time I was talking to my husband, I said, wow, us in the future, we're going to be laughing at things so much that people are going to think we're crazy. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm reaching that, like I'm, I'm reaching that because it is, it's just so funny. It's such a beautiful, funny life. So what are we creating? I have this phrase that I've been using a lot recently. It's called let's break the bank. And what I want to see is what happens when we all break the bank and, and what does break the bank mean? It's this phrase that it, you know, it's sort of a reference to 
um, hitting the jackpot and like, you know, you're, you're gambling and you rake in all the money that the house has. Right. And it's a phrase that we often use for like, uh, going beyond our ideas of what's possible. And I'm like, can we all break the bank? Like, can we all just think about this idea of limitation and well, if that person has a million dollars, then I can only have one. Right. And it's, it's not something that we're necessarily conscious of, but it's the way that we've been operating in this limitation and, you know, hierarchy. And well, if that person has this, then I can't. And, you know, in order for things to work, I have to sacrifice and, and all of these ideas and my excitement watching everyone wake up because I have been watching people wake up since I woke up. Right. And I've just been, it's like popcorn. It's crazy. Right. It's boom, boom, boom all around. And you hear somebody say something, you're like, Oh, I know what's happening. Right. (laughs) And so what I want to see is, can we just all break the bank? Can we, can we all manifest everything that we want and watch what happens as we continue to thrive together and, create just such a beautiful new world. You know, I mean, somebody asked me, what are you going to do if you essentially, if we're, we wake up in 10 years and we're in this new world together and everybody's living from their highest potential. And it's just, and I was like, you know what I said, you're going to love this. I was like, "Mm, I think then like everyone will be channeling because that's just part of who we are and everyone will really understand themselves and trust themselves. So I won't be doing that work. I think it'll be cool to like do ocean cleanup or something. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, by then we'll have all these inventions because people won't be afraid of bringing what is really like powerful within them. And so we'll be cleaning up the world and we'll be doing all these really beautiful things. And I'd love to do ocean cleanup. So that was an aside, but I thought you'd love that. <laughs> I do love that. I do love that. And I love how in your book, when in, in this idea of what we're creating, you say there is endless possibilities. We can create whatever we want, but in what we can create, it's broadly in creating the new earth. We each have something unique to contribute. Mm new inventions, new technologies, new ways of being, new healing modalities. I mean, the list really is, goes on and on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Isn't it exciting? It's just, it's so exciting and kind of overwhelming. <laughs> the overwhelm hits me sometimes. You know, I did a, a breath work session just like a week ago and it's beautiful because in some of these, it's sort of like a a journey session and uh, you know, so it's not just regular breathing. You're actually, you, you go into sort of a trance state, you can have visions and it's really beautiful. And while I was doing that, all of this insight started coming through. It was just, and I actually yelled out, I said, it's too much. (laughs) I said, I'm overwhelmed. And I started bawling and I was just, I was just crying so much, you know, and it was, it was this release of all this pressure that I'd been putting on myself to go, go, go and to accomplish. And it was so beautiful because my guides were just really comforting me at the time and, and saying, you just focus on this and this. And one of the aspects was actually, you know, talking to people, going on podcasts, sharing this stuff. So thank you. (laughs) Oh, awesome. (laughs) And, and I, I said, can you just take care of the other stuff? Because I want to focus on that and help me release my thoughts that I need to focus on these other things, because I know that I'm being taken care of and. And it, it, I mean, absolutely happened that way. Once I said, this is what I need. This is the support that I need. So beautiful. I love how that works, but how incredible and sometimes overwhelming. And I know, I know that that's why a lot of people place limitations on themselves and why we shut ourselves down. It's why It's why so many of us stay in the dramatic paradigms, because even if we're busy and we're stressed out to the max, it's like, it's less scary 
than the thought of doing that one thing that our heart is really calling us toward. And when our heart is calling us towards something, it matters so much that we almost can't even think about it. And it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. I could cry just thinking about how overwhelmed I am with what I want to bring. And I know, you know, that I'm, I'm doing it every day and yet I still feel that overwhelm. And so, yeah, I just want to share that with others because it is very, it's very normal to feel that overwhelm. And then the peace that can come from knowing that we don't need to work so hard. Remember, we can just be, we can just have that presence and tap into the flow and just let that flow take us. That's that new paradigm. That's what we're talking about. That's the new creative paradigm. Yes. That flow. Yes. Yes, exactly. And in order to create these new awesome possibilities, these endless possibilities, we need to become true creators. So let's talk about how we can do that a little bit. A huge part of accessing this new higher level way of being, this new higher level creativity is creating from the heart instead of the mind. And one avenue for this you talk about in your book is deepening your self-love. And I thought you talked about self-love in a really unique way in your book. So can you just share with us a bit about that and how self-love and creativity are connected? Big question. I'm glad I was reading my book before this (laughs) because I need a review. (laughs) You know, I think one of the big things about self-love is the big thing for me, especially when I was channeling this information that went into the book, a big aha moment for me was self-love is embracing every aspect of ourselves. There's this idea that in order to, you know, for example, do shadow work or to move forward in life in general, there's this idea that we need to sort of banish part of ourselves. And we do it interpersonally too. We do it with each other. Uh, We do it in our society. Well, that's not working. Let's, let's put it in over there. Let's do something else with it Uh, because it's not working. And I'm, I don't want to broadly speak in, you know, to, to anyone's process. So please don't take it as if I am, but you know, we do this with medication. That's not working. Let's hit it hard with medication. And as we all know, this isn't a balanced way to look at things. And it's actually not something that can bring us forward into the new that we're creating. We, we actually can't create by trying to kill everything that's not working. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> yeah. There's the truth bomb I'm here to deliver. <laughs> so the real, the real powerful process that comes with self-love is loving and embracing. It's this embracing of all aspects of ourself, right? So that part of you that you're like, oh, you know, for me, um, something that comes up is uh, jealousy or fear of not accomplishing or, you know, just these different things that come up for each of us. And can I love that about myself? Can I embrace that? Can I hold that and accept it instead of saying, God, I want to get rid of that thing that's in me. Uh, you know, it's, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to say, I love you. I am so glad to be living as a human, to have this experience and let's look at this. Let's just sit with it. Let's just be with it. And that is a really powerful process that we're also, a lot of us are very afraid to do sitting with it. Oh, that's so uncomfortable and beyond uncomfortable. It can be terrifying for some people. And it really is a powerful, powerful elixir to anything that we, that's making us uncomfortable in this life. And so, you know, this idea of shadow work, uh, shadow work is really loving those aspects of ourself. And that was something that honestly, in my awakening took me a little bit. I had a hard time with myself and then I had a hard time with others too. I remember, you know, at the beginning of my awakening, it was very startling because 
I was, you know, suddenly having visions and seeing people's energy and things like that. And, um, it freaked me out and I would use it as a way to be judgmental, uh, in my, in my reality. And I, I really went into, you know, there's this phase in the awakening that we often call like the hermit phase where we're just, we have to, in a way we ha- we're like getting all these downloads. We sort of have to just, or, or sometimes it half happens by default because, um, we go through this awakening and we don't identify with the old life that we were living. And so now it's us on our own for a minute. And that's kind of what it created in me. I really pushed a lot of people away because it was so, it was so much for me to be seeing all of that. And it's been really, really, really nice over the past few years to love myself so deeply that I can actually love other people, (laughs) you know, and have beautiful friendships in my life. I'll just share this. This is a quote from my grandpa. He's going to, he's going to love, he's passed on. He's going to love that. I'm quoting him right now. Um, if we expect our friends to be perfect, we'll find ourselves without any friends, you know? And, um, I think that's very true. And, and that goes for ourselves too, just so deeply loving ourselves, accepting it. And when we accept it, it's actually this powerful transmutation that integrates. And with that integration, we just feel so whole, so grounded, so powerful. And, and then we can really move forward. Otherwise, we got this anchor of something we're trying to get rid of, and it's just always tagging along and making us feel bad, you know? <laughs> so, yes. And in your book, you say self love is the key to our liberation, is mm. the key to heaven on earth. Mm. So beautiful. And I totally agree. Mm. I actually have a podcast episode called Self Love Will Save the World. <laughs> oh my God. I need to do more listening. And you touch on this self-love is really challenging for people, especially in today's society, especially in these dramatic paradigms. Mm. So one tool you present in your book to deepen your self-love is viewing people and relationships in your life as mirrors. Can you Mm. talk about that tool a little bit? Yeah. And it reminds me a little bit. It's almost not a tool. It's almost something that people come into and it's I'll just say it reminds me of the the period of time when it was sort of like a fun house because everything was a mirror so obviously. And it, you know, I was kind of touching on that just a minute ago. It was like, oh, oh, everywhere I look, it's just, um, I don't know who's projecting what am I projecting? Are you projecting? Oh my God, is it coming for me or you? Or that was a huge period of learning for me. Um, of just all of this, where is the projected projection starting? You know, uh, I still don't have an answer to that. It really is a fun house when you're going through that, that realm of, of reality and we're sacred mirrors for each other. You know, it's not necessarily, uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be this fun house. Although when we first become really aware of it, it can feel like that. So uh, for me, it felt like that. And then just through learning, through understanding, I recognized, well, I am the all that is, you know, I'm, I'm not just a fractal of it. This is something that's hard for our human minds to understand. I am literally all of it. I am all of it. So are you, you know, and how can that be? Well, the physical reality that we exist in, um, or that we, you know, are currently allowing ourselves to believe it's this beyond, it's so much more beyond that. And if I am the, all that is, then even if somebody else is, you know, projecting something onto me, if it hurts me, then it's in me. That's something that I haven't resolved yet. Right. It only gets activated if it's something that I haven't resolved, because if you think about it, we're all projecting everything all the time. Everything is being projected. I call it, we're, you know, we're all peeing in the pool, right? (laughs) Like none of us are exempt from that. Our energy is in this big pool and, you know, we're all, we're just trying to become more and more aware of it and more conscious of it. And so if we're all peeing in the pool, like how can I clean up what I eat so that it's cleaner? That's a weird example. I'm going down a tangent, but, (laughs) but 
but you know, if I'm, if I am the all that is, then each person that I interact with is, and this is how we can reframe it in a way that's really fun. That's not necessarily so scary house of mirrors. What is it that this sacred mirror is showing me about myself that I actually called in that I want to learn, you know, cause everything is my choice. It's just, sometimes we're not conscious of the choices we're making. And that's where people start to feel really disempowered. Like, Oh, this life isn't my choice. It's like, well, it is, but we're not conscious of the choices that we're making. We're doing that default dance, you know? So as we become more conscious of these choices that we're making, then we really see how powerful we are, how amazing it is that these instant or nearly instant manifestations. I mean, they get to be kind of crazy. It's like, we really start to see, oh, this is an illusion that we have a lot of mastery within that we can play with. We can form these, these moments within our lives. And what do I want to bring in? All I have to do is intend it. All I have to do is find that alignment, that part of me inside of myself that actually is in perfect harmony with what I want to call in. And there it is. And it shows up. And sometimes it shows up in the form of, you know, somebody saying something negative to us. And it's like, wow, okay. Can I reframe that to say, what's going on inside me? Can I, can I do a full stop right now and say, oh, I don't want to keep creating that. Let's see if I can be more intentional, more, more conscious within this process. Yeah. And I think having that awareness and having that consciousness and when having compassion and love for yourself as these things are mirrored to you and then compassion and love for others from that, like let's have compassion and love that we are each, each other's sacred mirrors. Like that's, Mm -hmm. that's beautiful that we can each help each other grow in that way, even if we aren't aware of it. Yeah. And through that, we can hopefully let go of some judgment as well. Oh yeah. You know, judgment's a really interesting, it can be difficult, you know, and judgment is one of those things that we use to keep ourselves feeling safe, right? So if I judge that, then I can somehow put it into my brain in a way that makes sense, you know? And, and, and so we do that. We live this physical reality with judgment. I don't like that. So I'm going to judge it And we sort of try and create these judgmental boundaries. I don't like it. So I'm going to judge it, you know, and there's this interesting thing. And I remember, you know, and I, I even made a a YouTube video about it because I was like, Oh, here we go. Okay. This is something that is a big lesson for me when we truly love ourselves Everything that is in existence in the entire world is allowed to exist exactly as it is. Ooh, big deep breath because sometimes we think, oh, I want to change things. Really, all we want to do is feel safe. We want to feel safe. We want to know we're okay. We want to feel loved. So when we provide that safety through knowing that we're eternal, that we can't be created or destroyed, that yes, we have desires and those are beautiful, but that doesn't mean that we need to stop anything or 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 change anything. What that really means is how can I bring myself into a place of peace with the all that is and see it all as a beautiful creation, meaning I just love myself completely. And then everything I see looks great. And further from that is then when we interact with each other, I have this, you know, deep love for myself. So not only do I love the people that I'm interacting with, but I also like them. And I like everything that they do. And that was the rub for me. That was like, Ooh, that's, that's kind of hard because we think, Oh, universal love. I can do that. I just, you know, I just won't agree with it. I I don't agree with what that person's doing, but can we take it a step further? And this is really tough medicine. Can we take it a step further and say, I actually appreciate what you're creating because you're a creator. That's rad. Or not even from our human selves saying that's rad because that's still even a judgment, but can we take that higher self perspective and say, I bow to you creator for your pure existence. I mean, can we, that's hard, you know? 
it's hard, but man, is that beautiful. And in your book, (laughs) you say, and I think it relates ultimate self-love is divine love and divine love is unconditional. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you're bringing up here is that unconditional love. Mm-hmm. And it's from that place, we can live in a state of joy and presence. And it's in that state, we can access our true creative potential. Mm. I know it's like a scary leap, but then when we do it, we're like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> It's a process and it takes patience. And I think part of accessing our creative power and our creative potential is having these shifts in perspectives and also making new choices, no longer making these choices out of habit, like in the dramatic paradigm, but Mm -hmm. making new choices, exploring new things and exploring new creative pursuits, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is a combination of different things. This is, you know, that, that breathing into the overwhelm, right? Because as we start to become present, there's this shaking off of those pre-programmed things that we're doing. And that takes a minute. That is a part of the process. So we kind of let ourselves be still. And there's this itching and this agitation, like, oh, but I want to do the old things because I don't know how to sit still with myself. So we have to do that first, right? Mm -hmm. That, that is part of the learning process, just being with ourselves, being at peace. And then from that place of peace, these new ideas start to emerge and they emerge naturally. And then it's like this flood of ideas and this excitement to create And we do sort of do that wobble dance, right? So sometimes we're like, oh, and we get into this, you know, recreation mode and everything like that. But we, we, by then hopefully have practiced the skill of being present and the skill of, okay, I can just be for a minute. If I got upset, I can be for a minute, forgive myself, love myself. What's emerging now from the present moment? And that is really powerful action that we can take. And then the the learning is allowing that energy to move through us, which is powerful. You know, I watch people a lot. I'm just really blessed because right from the moment that I started going through my awakening, I've kind of been... um, I've, I've been sharing my story with people. And so it's put me in a place where other people say, Oh, I'm going through something. I I've seen Allison say this. So, and, and so I get a lot of people saying, I hear you talking about this. I'm going through this crazy thing. Right. So I've, I've had this beautiful experience of being able to watch other people go through their awakening as well. And I see what happens when this energy starts to move through people and how it's just, it's so overwhelming. I mean, people are always just, it's like tears and, you know, just, just yesterday, I have a beautiful friend who, uh, was moving this energy and, and, you know, giving me a vision that was coming through her and she was practically hyperventilating and just this, um, this powerful energy that comes through us. And the next step, it's funny, but the next step is just allowing this energy to come through us. And that is learning because it's so powerful and, it's beautiful and it's overwhelming too. Cause we're like, well, what do I do with this? It's so much. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. And we create our world through our choices and through new experiences. So creating a new world means making new choices and having these new experiences and yeah. connecting with each other on, on this deeper level without yeah. judgment. Yes. Yes just having these present moment experiences and seeing what happens, you know, just seeing what happens. Like the moment shows so much magic to us. It shows quantum reality. It shows the infinite uh, potentiality. And then we can get all excited all over again. What do we want to create now? You know, (laughs) but in order to be making these new choices and have these 
opportunities to create all of these new things, we have to be leading from our heart. Right. Mm -hmm. And you talk a lot in your book about connecting to your heart, Mm -hmm. living with an open heart and listening to your heart. Can you share with us some tips and tools for connecting deeper with our hearts and getting out of our minds? Absolutely. And it is something that's so confusing, especially when we first start. I mean, I remember when I was channeling this, your heart is the guide, your your heart is the new mind. And I was like, what does that even mean? You know, and how do I stop listening to the mind? You know, what does that even mean? So something that's really powerful is to truly just place our hands on our heart and just listen, just listen as if it's a, a being that's communicating to us. And the, the truth that I've discovered is, you know, and I can actually feel it. It feels like this beautiful little sort of glowing, like little star, like it just kind of twinkles. And I actually feel it on my spine, right at my heart center. And I can feel it lighting up and it sort of tickles when I think about it, you know? And so there's this spot and I've been shown that's the portal that, our higher selves is delivered through, right? That's, that's where our higher selves delivers the truth of who we are. And of course, you know, I describe it as this tiny little point on my back, but it's actually, you know, infinite because time, space, size, those don't exist within these energetic realms. (laughs) So it's the magnificence of who we are being channeled into this physical experience is the heart center. So it's infinite. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, our mind is really built to maintain our reality. It's built to say, this is what's true. This is what I can see, right? We can't even perceive things that the mind won't let us, right? And so our mind is is helping us in that way, or at least the lower aspect of the mind, because we have layers of the mind, but the lower aspect of the mind is saying, this is our reality. And we can't expand if all we're allowing is the mental paradigm. So what we want to do is tune into the heart and learn to experience that our infinite nature and the infinite nature of our reality. And that's why it's better to have the the heart be what's guiding us. Because if we have the mind guiding us, it narrows it. We can only see what our mind allows us to see, which is, you know, we get into all these ideas of logic, right? People talk about logic all the time. Well, that's not logical. And I think it's so funny because so many people, what we're really doing is just using logic as a way to explain what we want to believe already. (laughs) So we can always find evidence for whatever we want to believe always, always, because everything exists, right? But, you know, there's this feeling of unsafety that people tend to experience when they're trying to move their consciousness from being mentally focused to being heart centered. It's a little bit scary. It feels like we're losing control. It feels like I need this reality to feel safe, to function and all of those things. And so what can we do? We can actually see that our heart has our best interest in mind, in mind, what a funny phrase, but our our heart is guiding us. It's within that quantum perspective. So not only does it have our best interest at heart, we'll say, but it also will bring us to our best interest in the smoothest, easiest, quickest way that will really make sense. And of course, being quick about things isn't always the point. Sometimes part of our reality is unfolding with time. And we love that our human selves, you know, feel frustrated and impatient, but our cosmic selves are like, yeah, let's, let's feel this unfolding, this time-based reality. This is fun. The anticipation, but anyway, to move into the heart, it's just bit by bit. And it's just practicing, taking a pause. And instead of, in fact, we can do this right now at just as practice. So imagine that you're moving through your day and, you know, you're about to do something that you regularly do. Just take a pause and tune into the heart and just say, hi, just listen, what's going on? 
And it could be, I'm chilling, you know, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> and it could also be, actually, have you called your friend? Your friend needs to hear from you. It could be go back to bed. And, and sometimes those are things that our mind is like, no, I don't want to hear that. I've got a list of what I need to do today and how I want to perceive the world. It's not even about action. It's, it's our whole perception of the world. And so it does take some time moving it. And then here's, here's the prize at the completion of this journey. When you really moved into the heart, you do get to access the highest places in your mind and the higher heart is open, right? So we're just this channel and the mind is actually, it turns into this very peaceful servant of the heart. And the mind says, oh, okay, so there's the directive. How can I help with this? So the mind doesn't become just like this, you know, glob hanging out inside of our head. It's, we've got all these beautiful tools and the mind's like, hey, here's, I, I heard the inspiration from the heart. I have a lot of ideas. Let's do this. So they start to work together. You touched on this. It takes consistency, daily Mm -hmm. check-ins with your heart, daily pauses and Mm -hmm. check-ins with your heart and being with yourself and and sitting in stillness with yourself, being in meditation and and checking in. And it takes patience as well, because it's not going to happen overnight because we've been conditioned to live from our ego and from our mind. So to decondition ourselves, to live from our heart, Instead, we have to be patient with ourselves. Absolutely. I love that patience aspect because the heart is outside of the realms of time, but the mind is very locked into this concept of like time and today is the day and it's 5 p.m. and blah, 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 because it helps with that functionality of believing in this reality, this physical reality. But from the heart space, it's eternal. It's all eternal. We're never missing anything. So it does take patience because we're not functioning within that same process. Some things happen instantly. And then other things, we just allow the process to unfold. I want to share a quote from your book that I thought was really beautiful that fits right now. The quote is, let us expand into the realms of the heart until there is nothing left to expand into until we are one with the universe. I love it so much. Using our hearts as our guide, we can also fulfill our individual life purpose and create what we are each uniquely here to create from our hearts. Yeah, so good. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Lots of gems in your book, Allison. Oh. Um, so I'd like to shift gears now, um, just you know, for the last bit of this podcast episode. I want to talk more about your day-to-day being an intuitive guide and a channel, since I'm sure part of being a true creator is having access to your intuition and a, that higher level information and guidance you can receive from channeling. My big question for you, Allison, is what does it mean to be both an intuitive guide and a channel? What's the difference between intuition and channeling? Such a good question. I think just to start, I use the word intuition as a way to kind of help people understand. It's a, it's a word that I think a lot of people can connect with. And it sounds silly, but there just aren't really words to describe these, these things, (laughs) you know, our intuition is really this nudge and the nudge is coming from, you know, it is coming from our higher self and it's coming from even our bodies can give us this intuitive nudge. Our bodies are so intelligent. Oh, I love my body. And that has been a huge journey for me, you know, and I'll just briefly say I am a star seed. And so I'm not sure if people are, you know, use that terminology who are listening, but for me, what that means is this is my first human incarnation. (laughs) And so it's been a learning journey for me to understand my body, to, to just really deeply love it and appreciate it and to listen to the wisdom that it has, because I was coming from this perspective of denying the body so that I could get on with my purpose. Right. And uh, that didn't work very well. (laughs) So, (laughs) 
the intelligence that's coming through our experience and our higher self, that can all be intuition. We get these nudges. We get these, these moments of guidance. Channeling is a very open channel of communication. So essentially there are, (laughs) if we can imagine that we're like a cell, right? Or I describe it as Russian nesting dolls. Okay. So we've got the big Russian nesting doll and that's the all that is. It's like this really big Russian nesting doll. And then we start to get down in these different layers of reality. And the Russian nesting doll that's on the inside is our physical reality, right? So in our physical reality, we think, well, this is all there is. And then when we expand into those other dimensional realities, we see, oh, the physical and this. And then we expand more and we say, oh, the physical and this and this. So as we expand into those multidimensional realms, we are able to then channel that information into our physical reality. So when I'm channeling, I'm opening the conduit. I'm opening that portal. And I use my hands a lot, but since we're on a podcast, I'll, I'll share with you that I'm sort of motioning to my crown chakra right now, because it is very much, we can channel through all of our chakras. And this is something that I teach people. I won't go too much into that because I could (laughs) stop stopping myself. But you know, when I channel, when I do verbal channelings, it's a, it's a conduit. It's this beautiful flow And it feels like this river or this, you know, just flow of light energy that's coming down through my eighth chakra into my crown chakra. And then I'm verbalizing it and I'm using my voice as a way to interpret these signals that are coming through. Um, When I channel it, especially when I started channeling, it was like one word at a time. I would get one word and then the next word and the next word. And I never knew what, what I was saying. And the sentences would start to form themselves. Now I use kind of a combination of clairvoyance, which is, you know, getting this full picture and speaking from human Allison. And then at times this really direct channeling comes through where it's um, like sentences that are coming through that are being delivered. I want to tell people, I always want to share with people, it's not just about the words or the information that's coming through. It is literally ecstatic. It is the most incredible feeling to channel these higher frequency energies. It is, I mean, you know, I say I laugh during these channeling sessions. I cry. I'm overwhelmed with joy my whole body lights up, my energy frequency lights up. It feels incredible. You know, I tell people uh, when I do these sessions with people or when I channel for myself or for groups, it's a lot like energy work too. The people who are receiving even the verbal guidance are also receiving this frequency. It's like we all light up together. It's so incredibly powerful And um, so it's a frequency shift as much as it is any message that's being delivered or any, um, you know, specific answers coming through or being even people often ask me, who do you channel? And that's something that's sometimes it's hard to define because I've been told I'm an open channel. I was told in channeling, you're an open channel. So you just open and you allow whatever, you know, desires to come through to come through. And of course, within certain frequency realms, you know, I tell people that and they're like, what about protection? And it's like, well, you know, if we tune into certain frequency realms, there's nothing to protect ourselves from. It's just all love. (laughs) So, so I go there, it's all love. I'm open. All sorts of love comes through. And I also get really cool downloads and information. So I absolutely love that description. Thank you so much. And I just really think it's important. And I've heard you talk about this a lot. Just like we are each intuitive beings, we each also have the capacity to channel, right? Absolutely. 100%. In fact, we're channeling most of the time and we're not aware of it. So there are these different degrees of channeling. If we think about it, if we bring it really down to like the brass tacks of it 
or as my friend Michael says, where the goats can get it, right? <laughs> bring it down to where the goats can eat it. I think it's the funniest phrase. So um, if we really bring it down to that ground level, our entire life experience is a channeled experience because we are channeling our higher self through this experience right now. It's just the level of consciousness. And what I aim to do and what I love to help others do is start to tap into higher and higher frequency states so that they can then channel those into this reality on a conscious level, not necessarily like forgetting all of it. Although here's something really beautiful. When, when channeling, there are times that I forget what is coming through. So essentially what we're doing is when we're really, really present, it's easy to forget actually what just happened. So sometimes when I'm channeling, I'm so present with word by word, what's coming through. I almost don't want to say word by word because it's almost like these little energy packets that then translate into words, you know, uh, because, you know, I make the joke. It's like, well, my guides aren't all speaking English. <laughs> That's not how it works, right? And telepathy isn't in English. That's why it works because we're just, it's energy, right? It's energy frequencies being translated in a way that we can understand it in our human consciousness. But, you know, as I'm channeling, uh, sometimes I forget what I had just said. And that's because I'm so present. I'm so present in the moment and I'm just existing in this really, really ecstatic state and opening that river to flow through me. And, uh, and that's why I record them. Cause I want to hear afterward, like all the little nuggets, you know, <laughs> what was that? That was cool. I love that. And I, I just really want to demystify channeling a little bit because I've heard it called a superpower before. And I feel like it's something people think only a select few people can do. But like we've said, everyone can channel. Everyone on earth now can channel. But how can we access? Can you share a little bit about how we can access and unlock our channeling capabilities and kind of demystify that for people that don't do it? or aren't yeah. aware that they're doing it. Yeah. Okay. You know, it sounds to me, it's an answer that makes a lot of sense. And so I hope it's being communicated in a way that makes a lot of sense because it really is just presence. And when we're present, then we can actually hear on a different level because there's actually a lot going on all the time. We exist in this time space reality and so there's a lot that we shut out, but all realities exist in the here and now. And so if we think about it, you know, it's almost like our guides are always on standby because they're outside the realms of time, or at least they're at the very least they're in realms that are more flexible. Our higher self exists beyond time. Our higher self is always being channeled into us, right? So it's sort of like, and it's funny that this is old school now, but it's sort of like just picking up the phone when somebody's ringing, it's funny. That's like an old school thing. We don't even have those phones anymore. But if somebody's calling on the phone, imagine that all we have to do, the phone doesn't even have to ring. Anytime we want like an understanding of something, all we have to do is pick up the phone and start listening. You know, it's crazy. It's kind of crazy. And it just takes a deep level of presence and what I teach people to do is to enter into trance states so that they can listen at a different level. That's part of the teachings that, that I offer. So I guess I would say just at, at, at basic level, uh, there's, there's a couple big components. It's being highly present and then it's learning to trust ourselves. And it's interesting because I found that like, I want to say 90% of what I teach isn't about channeling. It's helping people trust themselves. It's kind of crazy. Like when people actually join the course and everything, it's like, all right, master. So like, I'm going to teach you that you are a master and that you can trust yourself. You know, that's, that's really the majority of it, at least from my perspective, it's presence and, and self-trust and practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. And can you share with us maybe one big reason why people listening should consider learning to channel? 
So I think it's really important now in, in this current time for people to learn to channel because all of us, it's just time for us to step into our mastery and the truth of who we are for the reason what we're going through right now as a collective with, you know, a pandemic hitting and the population of the earth is just really big right now. And we've got massive amounts of technology and things are moving really quickly. It's sort of this perfect storm for awakening, right? It's this perfect storm. It's time. The frequency of the earth is shifting. And so all beings that are on the earth are actually experiencing that energy shift as well. And as we all shift and we go through these awakenings, we need to step powerfully into our mastery because it's time for these changes to occur. You know, I say this in the book, it's not necessarily about uh, there's been something wrong. It's not necessarily about we've been sinning or we've been doing something wrong or like, look at how much we've messed everything up. It's actually, we've just been playing a game, but we've been playing it unconsciously. So I want to help people become more and more conscious. And really what I want to help people do is step into their mastery. That's more than anything I teach. That's sort of my anchor level. Why I'm here to help you step into your mastery because I know you're a master. I know we're all masters. And for us to be conscious of being a master is powerful. And like I said before, like, what does it look like if we break the bank? If we all step into our mastery, that's a world that I want to live in. So in the end, it is kind of selfish because I want to live in a world where we're all just really powerful, conscious creators, you know, and I know that people are looking for that. So I'm just showing up with what I know and saying, all right, I can see that you're looking for this. I've got this piece of the puzzle. Let's do this. And, uh, and then show me what you channel through you that wants to be created. When you tune in to your higher self, or when you tune in to even these other, um, dimensional beings or these other groups or these councils that a lot of people tune into, what's the message that's meant to come through you? I want to hear it. We're all meant to speak it. And so for me, it's just, it's just time. It's time for it. And so people are naturally feeling the calling. And, um, and I love that, you know, we're the, like these little popcorn kernels, like I was saying, and we're just all, we're just all getting heated up right now and we're all popping. And I, I just, I love watching it and I love seeing how things are shifting and, um, I love teaching people channeling. (laughs) So this is how I just sort of plug myself into, well, this, this is happening in the world. Eventually I really do. We'll, we'll all be channeling. It will be a very natural, we'll, we will have integrated our highest self and be walking on this land as these really powerful creators in a conscious way. And then what, and, and I want to see, and then what. I want to live in that world too. And I yeah. hope I hope anyone listening that feels this calling is intrigued in any way or resonates with what we've been talking about in any way starts exploring. Thank you, Allison, for sharing your wisdom and gifts with us today. And I'll just end the podcast today with a little compilation of quotes from Allison's book, The Era of the True Creator. Through consciously acting on our freedom, and making these higher level choices, we activate into our individual mastery and together create a new world. Stay in the heart through the shaky times and don't be afraid to throw your hands up and enjoy the ride. And remember to stay humble. To be a master is to know that this is only the beginning.